lots of you have been asking what happened to the backpack well i have been using the backpack and uh, i have now an opinion about the backpack and i will tell you um, how it has performed okay so as you can see i have attached um, some um, patches that's my logo my channel logo and uh, my tbs knives because i like the tbs knives not being paid to have this patch here but uh, but i <laughs> i like it um so when i attach a patch to my backpack that means i'm going to use this backpack because it's a really good backpack i need to point out that um, It doesn't come with uh, Velcro, um, which it should, because many people like to be able to put patches on. So I stitched these on, and uh, yeah. So, but that's that's a minor detail, of course. This is the Lundhags Gnaik 54. Nothing here is toxic, and the polyester uh, is re recycled. <clears throat> okay, so what do I what I don't like this one <laughs> This handle here. I've never used it um, It's kind of a signature feature of this design, but uh, So, so <laughs> Some people I guess use it, but I, I call it habit. Maybe I, I use uh, other means of lifting my backpack so this is extra weight that I don't need it could have been a bit lighter but not much because I, I like the fabric it needs to be um, solid you know some lightweight backpacks they are too fragile let me turn it around <coughs> um, it has this mesh system uh, which I like a lot, but okay, the negatives first. Um, can you see this? It goes in like this. And it, it's not flush with the mesh. And also, these comes together here, the straps. I would have preferred the straps to be flush with the mesh and without this little piece here because the human body is not designed like that. Um, I want I don't I don't need this part here. <laughs> I it's it's uh, I want the straps flush with the mesh and no piece in the middle here. Okay? So uh Lundags, if you are listening that's that's what I want having said that you don't you don't feel this part here when you are wearing a backpack it's not in the way it's not un uncomfortable <clears throat> um, uh, yes uh, the straps the straps are not thick they are not thin but they are not the sort of uh, um, Thick, uh, you know, all the backpacks they they uh, they have uh, very thick padding here. This padding is really good. It's really good. It's it's high quality. You can just feel it. But it's it's not thick. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I don't know, but maybe someone who is uh, less uh, meaty than than I am. Um, and maybe someone walking in warmer climates with just a t-shirt and so on um, would I don't know I can't really say that it would be uncomfortable I would need to have someone uh, test it in someone less um, a skinnier person um, to test it uh, so I don't know I don't know but they are I'm glad they're not thinner, you know, 
but it's it's okay like it is okay <clears throat> now uh, it's 54 liters let me bring the camera a bit closer <clears throat> okay so it has uh, <coughs> sorry uh, yes this um, never mind it's just some some uh, straps I put there for my thermosel um, unit that chases all the bugs away but there are no bugs now because it's it's uh, November um, okay it has these are all metal and uh, the straps really solid the whole backpack is well made it's uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, I've been carrying tools in this. I've been uh, carrying uh, everything, um, and it's uh, it's 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 going to it's not going to let you down this backpack, and <clears throat> it's yeah, I really like it. Now, it has lots of straps, lots of straps, and you can tighten it in every possible way uh, and it can be expanded it has straps on the side <clears throat> and it has <clears throat> these pockets on the side not so crazy about this elastic fabric here um, I think it will uh, I don't th I don't know how long this will last. So that's maybe not the best. Uh, they could have done chosen another fabric, maybe. Um, okay, and it has this extra pocket where you can put, you know, things you need. Uh, well, that's my frying pan things you need uh, in a hurry uh, I don't really need my frying pan in a hurry but, um, but okay um, you can remove the top lid uh, yeah it has load lifters it has a chest strap never mind this this is just for my camera so, so it's just I've attached it there it has all the normal um, means of adjustment and uh, as I said this mesh system will allow you to now, I've never used a, a backpack with mesh system before but now I can't imagine going back to to normal backpacks because this is really comfortable you can walk around without getting a sweaty back and uh, it has this angle here you can put stuff in between here well, well I don't do that because then it wouldn't be airy anymore <laughs> um, yes top lid is uh, can be used as a unit to carry stuff on its own it has a pocket inside here it has a pocket oops outside there's a GPS uh, and stuff and uh, yeah <coughs> okay so 54 liters that's uh, for me uh, that's I never need anything more than that because for one or two days in winter even I don't carry more than that I have uh, just put a lot in here now it's, uh, that was my expert uh, sleeping pad my compass food Yarvin bag a drone and uh, my sleeping bag that I didn't compress because I just wanted to make a point out of that the fact that this sleep this backpack is roomy it is bottle and my beloved knife okay 
and it has of course pockets on the belt I have uh, memory cards extra batteries for my camera in here I have um, extra batteries for my uh, for my microphone in here <clears throat> and these if you open here there's an attachment point here that you can use to pull things as I said in the other video uh, a uh, pulk which is uh, well you know and uh, like uh, what's uh, what's that? Yeah, it's called pulk in uh, in English as well, actually. Uh, but we will need snow for that. Or you can pull some logs behind you, even, which is safer than carrying them on your shoulder. You can uh, carry your <coughs> drunken mate, <coughs> um, pull him behind you. <laughs> You're walking back from the pub, <coughs> so. Yeah, really like this this backpack, uh, and I can't find any flaws about it. It's just very well made. Um, yeah, this this is just something I put here. It's a fair rod and uh, a means of cutting stuff here for an emergency situation. Oh yes, before I forget. <coughs> Um, here is uh, you can put ski poles here you can put an axe <coughs> I put the axe on the side but um, you can put the axe here as well and it has several attachment points here okay so, so you can put straps and stuff across here. Okay, so that was my backpack and uh, now you asked me if I can recommend it and the answer is yes I can. It's a very good backpack. It's a bit pricey, I know, but it is high. It's just the best you can get. Um, in of this sort of backpack that you can use for bushcrafting and hiking it's uh, the good thing about this and the reason why I asked in my other video is this the perfect bushcrafting backpack is that it's not as fragile as the other well most other backpacks uh, I've seen and um, for hiking hiking backpacks tend to be a bit fragile in my opinion and they come without the attachment points that this Gnaik 54 has. Um, I would say I I wish it came in other colors as well. This is the shorter length. It comes in two back lengths. It's not adjustable, as you you maybe noticed. Uh, the back length, the torso length, I mean, is not adjustable. So you have to choose between the shorter length. And uh, the longer length and um, I'm 180 centimeters but um, now um, that doesn't really always uh, tell you uh, how long your backpack torso length should be um, because it, it depends on other other things in your physiology really um, and lots of people they actually walk around with uh, uh, backpacks that are too long for them in the torso. The torso length is, <coughs> by the way, this. This is the torso torso length we're talking about. Okay. Um, so in this length, it comes in in red and black, and in the longer length, green. So I wish it came in all colors um, in this shorter length. Uh, because I would have preferred to have it in, in green um, but that's black is okay as well
Um, the picture, the photo is uh, a burrow at Uppsta during excavation in 1962. Burial site for 2,500 years. From the early Bronze Age to the end of the Viking Age, the burial <coughs> sorry, the burial site at Uppsta was a gathering place for people, the meeting point between the living and the dead. In the early Bronze Age, the people of Tuna were among the first to introduce new burial customs from continental Europe. Instead of being buried in hilltop cairns, members of the elite were now buried in graves close to the houses. This new burial custom is first seen here at Uppsta, but later, but would later be evident at Hun in Borge, Gunnarstorp in Sjeberg, and eventually all across the hillsides around the farms. Now these places are um, local, very close to this place. By the late Bronze Age, cremation had become a simple part of funeral ritual. In the Roman Iron Age, it was usual for prestigious weapons and ornaments to be placed in the grave of leaders, and by the Viking Age, women and men of the elite were buried in beautiful ships. With the introduction of Christianity at the end of the Viking Age, Uppsta was abandoned as a burial site, for the dead were now buried in hell of ground near the churches. What sort of rituals are performed when someone dies today? Well, <clears throat> this uh, they, they put these questions here um, for school kids uh, who usually come here to learn about the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. And here it says, um, the Stone Age, and around 1000, <coughs> 1700 uh, BC started the older Bronze Age, 1100 uh, BC uh, started the younger Bronze Age, 500 uh, BC the Iron Age started um, 1030, well today we would say um, 1066 because what they're saying, what they are, that number, they, they mean really uh, the end of the Viking Age. And, uh, and it's normal now to say 1066. Now, <clears throat> some of you might not be aware of that um, you would probably have better chances of drinking out of a wine glass, a, a glass um, than a horn in the Viking, if, if you were among rich people in the Viking Age. Uh, this is a typical Roman wine set, it consisted of a bronze vessel, a sieve and pouring cup, in addition to wine glasses. Three glasses and sieve are found in a Roman Iron Age grave in Stordal, Sjeberg, just around the corner here practically, together with two silver brooches, a gold pendant and two gold rings. And uh, this is gold pendant. Um, you can get these uh, in jewelry shops. Gold pendants were worn by women. This one was found in a Roman Iron Age grave in Leikvold, Tuna. Tuna and Opsta. Now Tuna is, uh, I don't know if you've seen my video from the, the Viking festival near the Tuna lake. That's Tuna, it's, that's that way. Opsta, that's here. Iron Age center of power. Gladni of Fi <coughs> sorry. <coughs> um, Gladni your friend with gifts of arms and garments, friendships bound by mutual gifts, last longest, all being equal. That's stanza 41 of Hovamol. The leading families would have been well versed in the norms of Iron Age society and uh, in social practices for engaging with farmers and allies in the surrounding area. They would have been able to offer food in lean years. That's very important. Now, the, a, a Viking chieftain was a chieftain on the mercy of his people. It's important that we understand that. So if you could not provide for your people, farmers, normal people in lean years, you would probably not be chieftain for long. Now, protection from en enemies also essential and knowledge of new trends, beliefs and rituals. The keys to this power were economical resources, agriculture and cattle rearing on the Östfold Ridge, 
that's where we are now, produced a surplus of goods that could be traded to finance foreign journeys. They came home from these with new customs and goods. A hall was built for feasting, a set of Roman wine glasses was used at the drinking ceremony, and with exclusive gifts, bonds were tied and alliances forged. Craftsmen were engaged to create the finest weapons, clothes and ornaments. The rich graves of Roman era Tuna tell us that these were men and women who commanded respect. But anyway, that's all for now and I have a school class behind me, I think. No, we're up in the hill here. Uh, <laughs> And they will be very interested in uh, in uh, finding out what's going on down here on the on the on the field. Um. <laughs> okay, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing, share this video, and uh, I'll see you next time. Until then, take care and have a nice day.